Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for clicking on another video. In today's video, I wanted to share some tips with you that have really helped me over the last few years that I think are crucial in enabling us to succeed with healthier diets. Now when I'm talking about healthier diets, I just wanna clarify what I mean, improving your diet. So actually making the way that you eat better. Because the truth is, every one of us, if we're, you know, if you're alive, I assume you are, if you're watching this, that's a scary thought, but every one of us is alive and has a diet. So diet is generally just what you tend to eat. So what you consume in order to keep moving as an energy source to keep our bodies alive. So we're all on a diet, whether we want to admit it or not. There are good diets and there can be bad diets. Some can be okay, some can be average, but it is actually possible to alter our diet, tweak it here and there in order to get more of the health benefits that we know that food can provide. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about fad diets. I'm not talking about two week starvation or extremist diet culture where you you change your diet for a short period of time expecting long-term results that is something that I will touch on in this video though so yeah just to clarify I know that there's a lot of there's a lot of like chat about dieting and diet culture I just don't want to get this video confused I think that it's possible to acknowledge the bad things in our modern diet culture without throwing away the idea of improving our diets altogether. I think that we as humans tend to swing from one extreme to another. I try and avoid that, you know, there's good and bad and everything. You just got to take the time to sift through, take out the good and reject the bad, okay? So I don't think it's wrong to go on a diet as long as that is actually a long-term improvement to the way that you eat that you simply refer to as I'm on a diet for convenience, social, understanding purposes does that make sense i really hope that makes sense anyway i'm gonna try and keep it short to about five tips for this video but honestly i have so many um so i could probably do a part two if you want i say i could probably do a part two i already have like 15 tips written down <laughs> but i don't want to just chat at you for ages so if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe leave me a comment let me know what you think probably like during the video or as you watch it um and we'll get straight into it so my first tip is to find healthy recipes that you actually enjoy eating. Now this is just so key to the point where I would say it is my number one healthy eating tip. I told that to my brother before and he was like, Sarah, that's a terrible tip. You cannot tell people that. But honestly, my number one healthy eating tip is to only eat healthy food that you actually like. <laughs> And I know that sounds bad because we're so used to healthy diets being things that we force and it's like, no, chug back that heinous green smoothie in the name of health. I just don't believe that, you know? I think that health is so much more than just a nutrient to our body. I think it's social, it's emotional. Like emotional eating is known as a bad thing, but I also think that food can be super comforting. You know, we have taste buds for a reason. Things can taste good. It is not bad for something to taste good. And I think that when we like food, it means we're actually gonna eat it more. So if your idea of healthy eating is eating some dry, stale, flavorless kale salad that you hate, it's no wonder that you're, you're not feeling like you're keeping up with it. It's no wonder that I failed so many times to eat healthily when I was trying to drink cucumber smoothies. Bad ones. Don't be afraid of saying no to the healthy food that you don't really like. Like it's okay, God's given us so many vegetables, so many plants to choose from, you don't have to love every single one. Can I tell you a secret? I don't like avocado. It's not that I don't like it. Oh my gosh, I feel the judgment. It's just that when I eat it, my tummy gets upset. I don't know what it is. I just, I just end up feeling like really sick with like bad tummy ache like an hour or two after and it's just not worth it. And so I don't eat avocados, even though there are loads of health benefits, there's loads of healthy fats in there, I just don't eat them. And I get those health benefits and those nutrients from other foods. And that's okay, <laughs> that really is okay. Because if I force myself to eat avocado on toast for breakfast every morning, I wouldn't stick with it very long. So I'd be, I'd be feeling sick all day. And I'd be like, well, healthy eating sucks because I'm walking around with abdominal pain. <laughs> Do you, is this making sense? Do you get what I mean? Feel free to be yourself within your diet. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to look exactly like the latest fitness influencer. You can just look like you eating a healthy diet. So don't be afraid to say no thank you to the, to the crappy salad <laughs> and yes please to the fun salad, okay? 
Just because you tried one healthy recipe and it sucks. That's not the end of the story. Just keep searching. There are good healthy alternatives out there. Like for example, I absolutely love pancakes. I just love pancakes. I think it's such a great concept to have cake for breakfast genius blows my mind but then when I was eating more healthily and I was like oh there's a lot of sugar in these I was like how am I gonna carry on eating these and so I found a way I just don't add sugar I add fruit instead I don't use loads of oil I use fry like spray and there we have it a breakfast that is a lot more healthy but I still enjoy it and I wake up and I'm like oh what's the breakfast cake cake is for breakfast. So I want to encourage you that if you are currently eating meals that you really don't enjoy, you don't like the taste of, you don't look forward to, then consider finding some new recipes. You can find loads of recipes over on my Instagram, there's some on my blog too, and um, there's just so many options. Now that we have the internet, there's, it's so amazing for this, you can just keep trying, keep searching. It is hard enough to exercise self-control over food that you do love, like burgers and pizzas and ice cream, without replacing that food with food that you actually hate. So let's not do that, okay? If we're gonna limit ones that we've already got a heart to heart with, if we're gonna limit the Ben and Jerry's, then the least we can do is replace it with something that we actually enjoy. In order to eat healthily, you don't have to gag at every spoonful of food that you take. Please, please believe me on that. And that is tip number one. My second tip is not to over restrict. So cutting out whole food group, I'm not gonna slam everyone who's ever cut out a carb and say, oh, thou art a heathen. No, no, we, there's flexibility and grace here. That's okay. But long term, we gotta think long term. Do you really want a life without carbs? Carbs are good for you, carbs are good for you. So the goal actually isn't to completely cut out food groups unless it's for like an actual health, risk like if you have to cut out gluten because you have celiac disease and there's really no need to cut out whole foods groups and over restrict yourself the tendency and, and the, the danger in over restricting ourselves is that rebound that rebound binge is a danger that you're actually not giving your body the food that it needs like food is good calories are good let's not get it twisted so actually the aim of a healthy diet is to feed your body well the aim is to feed it so over restricting yourself whether that's by starving yourself of calories or removing whole food groups is not a good idea it's not sustainable long term and actually even though you might see short-term perks like water weight loss or or instant visual change that's not necessarily the best and it's not necessarily going to carry you through to long-term sustainable healthy eating over restricting don't do it just 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 no my third tip oh is one that i love especially as like a low-key perfectionist if you can't tell that by my napkins <laughs> don't beat yourself up over the small things don't do it don't do it don't beat yourself up if you eat a biscuit it's not the end of the world if you eat the whole pack of biscuits it's not the end of the world oh my gosh i used to do this so much I, I, actually i i don't i was gonna say i still do it but i don't praise the lord thank god yeah i don't actually do that anymore oh progress feels so good but i used to get so annoyed with myself when i'd ruin one thing like i'd have a healthy breakfast i'd have a healthy lunch i'd be on my way to dinner and someone would offer me a sweet and i would eat five and I would be like, Sarah, you've ruined your whole diet. Who needs a healthy dinner? Whatever, order pizza. And so I, because I was focusing so much on the tiny things and aiming for absolute perfection every day, it meant that when I inevitably made a mistake, because you will, you know, we're human, it's fine to like make a slip up every now and then. When I would make a tiny mistake, I'd beat myself up over it so much. And that would lead me to sit in a place of failure. And failure mindset can really really affects you badly like I would be sitting in that place of failure thinking oh I've messed it up why even try I've already I've already lost the race may as well quit and go home but that's not how healthy eating works and I just want to encourage you not to stress over the little things it's so silly and it's so counterproductive people make mistakes you're gonna carry on making mistakes some of the time they're not even a mistake like you can actually have a biscuit and still have an overall healthy diet like as I've just said don't over restrict but don't beat yourself up when things don't go perfectly to plan if you have a bad day and you're just like oh, I ate a load of crap, just forget about it, forgive yourself, that's fine, tomorrow's a new day, it is genuinely fine, and you don't, don't make healthy eating a negative experience for yourself by always having a go at yourself, make it a positive experience, so focus on the good things you, you did do. Oh, I love this tip so much, my fourth tip is to focus on input over output, <sighs> input 
over output. So much truth in this, so much power in this. As humans, we tend to want like quick results. We love instance, now, yesterday, microwave, microwave my health results, microwave my abs, I want them pop in yesterday. But that can be super discouraging because things just don't happen that quickly. So if you're constantly focusing on the output that you want, so whether that is an aesthetic change, whether that's a number change on the scale, like weight loss, whatever the change is that you're hoping for, don't focus on that final result. Focus on your input because the truth is the input is the only thing that you can directly control. So if you spend a lot of time focusing on the output, something that you can't as directly manipulate as you would like to, it can be really frustrating. So it can be like, oh my gosh, I've eaten healthily for three days and this scale has gone up, my weight has gone up. Instead of getting to the end of the day and saying, how many pounds did I lose? Or how many pounds did I gain? I'll get to the end of the day and say, how many of the meals um, did I eat that I wanted to eat? How much of my session did I do? Because the results will follow. The results will follow. That's just science. That's the way it works. If you're doing the, the right things, if you're focusing on the input and putting it in consistently, the output will look after itself. So save yourself a load of stress. The journey is your life. The bit of how you get there is the thing that you experience day after day. And let's make that a positive, pleasant experience. I had this when I was first trying to get abs. I know, I know I'm supposed to be healthy holy doctor that only ever focuses on the health benefits not the aesthetics but your girl wanted abs what i wanted was a rippling six pack so defined that you could think you could play a guitar on it because because they were that defined <laughs> i went to the gym at 5 a.m like most days i'd say probably average about four days a week and i would take update pictures every day picture selfie 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 and oh my goodness, it was demoralizing. As I would look at the pictures and nothing had changed, it was so demoralizing. I was like, cool, 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 cool. I've only been waking up at 5 a.m. for like 10 years and yet there are no abs. And it genuinely got to the point where one day I took a selfie, I compared it to my first selfie that I'd taken literally about three months before that. And I was like, there is no visible difference. There is no difference. I kid you not, three months, there was no difference. Three months of actual commitment, you guys, doing burpees, eating healthily, like actually committing to it. There was no change in three months and I felt like I was gonna go crazy. I looked at that selfie. I genuinely, I remember driving home with my friend in the car, cause it was me and my gym buddy who were doing it. And I was just thinking, this is it. I cannot be bothered. I'm not doing this anymore this just sucks, like there's no point, I'm not gonna reach my goals. And I had the decision in that moment of whether I was gonna quit because I wasn't seeing my output. I had to decide in that moment, do you know what, no, I, I don't know why I haven't seen the output yet, I don't get it, I, I, I'm just, so I'm just gonna focus on carrying on putting in what it takes for as long as it takes. I'm not gonna worry about the output, I'm just gonna keep going. And I did, I just kept going to the gym, I stopped taking those pictures, I found it super discouraging when I wasn't seeing the output that I wanted, and I just focused on carrying on going to the gym. And then like a few months after that, I remember being at Fit Club, the fitness society that I led, and there was a personal trainer there, he made some comment, random comment, he was like, oh Sarah, I wish I had an eight pack like yours. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, what? I looked down, I was like, I don't have an eight pack. And I went home, I took a picture in the mirror. I I didn't have an eight pack, but I had like a, a pretty good going six pack. And I compared it to my, my pictures from months ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, the output came without me even realizing. When I just stopped begging for it, I actually started enjoying the process more. And it came sure enough and it was just less stressful. And I probably achieved it sooner because I then could spend my energy focusing on the thing that I actually could control, which was the input. So taking things one meal at a time, focusing on the healthy choice that you can make right now, rather than what the scale will say tomorrow, is the more important thing. It's the thing that you have the most control over. It's the thing that you can affect. So don't worry about the output. Just focus on one meal at a time while the output matters, focusing on the output is not necessarily going to bring it about any faster. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah. My fifth tip is to take the time limits off. Take the time limits off your journey. Don't rush things. Don't rush perfecting a healthy diet like it's a process. Healthy eating is a habit and it takes a long time to learn a new habit, especially a habit that is involved in every area of your life. Like we eat like three to five to however many times a day. Like that is, that's a lot. To remember to do that perfectly that many times constantly, that's a lot. It's not a small thing. So 
So don't rush learning that habit of healthy eating. It's gonna take a long time. So take the time limits off. This isn't a two month diet. This isn't a two week diet. Healthy eating can't be limited in those time constraints. It's just for life. It's just like, actually, this is the way I would like to eat for the rest of my life. I'd like to eat five pieces of fruit and veg a day for the rest of my life. And I'm just gonna keep walking towards that goal. I'm gonna keep chasing down that goal and I'm gonna keep living it. One of the things that I tell myself a lot is that three years from now, I'm gonna be three years older either way by God's grace. So I may as well be three years older and three years closer to my goal. I may as well be three years older and three years wiser. You can't microwave time like that. We can't microwave the process. And there are so many benefits, so much gold along a journey. We would miss a lot of that gold if we were able to rush the process. So it's actually a blessing in disguise that we have to go through the different steps, the different emotions, the different elements of improving our diets. There's a lot that we can learn in there, whether it's discipline, whether it's self-control, whether it's budgeting, whether it's sharing. <laughs> There's so much that we can learn on this journey. So I just want to encourage you not to rush it. You don't have to be perfect in two weeks from now, two years from now, you don't have to be perfect. Just know that this is a lifelong thing. It's a lifelong change. It's a lifestyle and that is what brings the benefits. Even if you could diet perfectly or eat perfectly for the next two months, that really wouldn't mean much, like scientifically based on the research we have at the moment, that wouldn't mean that much if you then didn't eat healthily for the next 20 years. Does that make sense? So it's all about the long term, it's not about the short term, there's no rush. You're beautiful as you are, you're beautiful as you are, you are worthy as you are, there is no need to rush this. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. And thank you for being with me on this channel, for watching my videos, for all the love that you share and the, allowing me to be even like this tiny little part of your life. I'm really grateful for that. <laughs> and yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on there as well. And on Twitter, I post so much, probably too much, but that's okay. Alrighty then. Bye.